lucky I didn't blow your brains out. Oh, fuck yeah. Remember back when I told you that I'm a loca colo. You are now tuning into Vibes. I'm going to have to bring Master P back. Can't sell dope where you sleep at. Can't fuck hoes where you creep at. That's deep. It makes no sense to me, but um, it's deep. I think. It's it's really not deep. That shit is stupid. What's up, y'all? <laughs> What's up, y'all? Guess who's back? Me. It's me, me, and you are tuning in to another episode of Vibes, a podcast. You guys, I took like a little hiatus, took another break. A bitch be tired, okay? I be needing to go to sleep. Um, But I'm back. Holds me. Hold me. Hold me. Y'all, don't be mad. Don't be fooled by the rocks that I got either um, because I don't have any. Here's the thing. I'm going to stop talking shit. Let's get into the song of the week. Here is, I like this song, y'all. This is a Marjani with Hotep Trap. And it sounds very much um, like some shit a Hotep would say because, you know, some of the time you really won't understand what she's talking about. However, y'all check the song out and then... We'll come back for judgment. Here is Marjani with Hotep Trab. Check this song out and I'll be right back. Take me to your leader. Take me to your queen. Let me be your lover. I will be your dream. Take me to your leader, take me to your queen, let me be your lover, I will be your dream. Take me to your leader, take me to your queen, let me be your lover, I will be your dream. Take me to your leader, take me to your queen, let me be your lover, I will be your dream. She wake up every morning, she wake up another morning with the Y'all, we're back, right? 
we're back. And I'm telling y'all, that joint right there is it's like some real anti hotep shit. And I did y'all hear how she was um shouting out the podcast? She was like, vibe, vibes, vibes, vibes. Thank you, girl. Thank you for making that um song. You know, basically for me and the podcast. Um you worked really hard on that and I thank you for that. Um God damn, I like that song. Take me to your leader. Take me to your queen. That is some real. Mm, that is some real whole type shit. That's what they be doing. That's what them. Anywho. Yeah, that was Marjani. That's M-A-R-J-A-N-I with Hotep Trap. Um, that comes from her album, Computer Jams, Volume 1. You can actually find that album and download it on SoundCloud right now. Marjani. Go and support her. That song is dope. I haven't listened to the album yet, but I'm definitely going to do that today. So let's support Marjani. Yeah, Hotep Trap. If it sounds that good, the whole album, um, definitely downloading them joints. Um, yeah, let's move on to some black shit. Okay, girl, what's all this black shit? I don't know. You know, black ass shit that black ass people be doing. Like, super black shit all right guys um first up on this list oh <sighs> so cat williams <laughs> did an interview with v103 uh radio station i believe he was in atlanta and if not i don't give a fuck um i don't even know the, the lady's name who hosts the show wanda somebody he went in on her but that's not what i'm talking about so he did this interview and he was talking about you know um Tiffany Haddish, right? And he basically shaded Tiffany Haddish, um, even though, okay, let's stick to the story. He shaded Tiffany Haddish because he said he basically doesn't think she's funny and no one can tell you a Tiffany Haddish joke um, off the top of their head. Um, Basically, everything that she's worked hard for, she doesn't deserve because she's not funny. And there are other comedians out here right now who live and breathe comedy and they're not getting their shots. Cat Williams. First off, um, I mean, y'all can hate me if y'all want to, but nigga, you not funny. Like what? Just because you can get on the stage and make your voice high, make your voice low, and then jump and sweat your fucking perm out. Like, what? Okay. You got about three good jokes. And how long have you been doing comedy? And it's all the same. So I didn't... My thing is, I don't appreciate... I didn't... I don't appreciate when black people just down other black people. I don't. Now... We all know Tiffany Haddish, and it's fine if you don't think she's funny. There are a lot of people who do not think that she's funny, but you don't down her work ethic. You don't down the fact that she is a comedian. She's been doing this since she was 15 or 16 years old. It doesn't matter whether or not you think she's funny or she's funny to you. Um, I didn't, I didn't like that he was just shading her and it's like, damn, why can't she live? She's been out here working, um, you know what else made me mad? He was just like, you know, people just saw Girls Trip and now they think, you know, she's funny from that movie, but she hasn't done stand up where, um, you know, she's telling jokes and and she's on the stage for hours at a time. And I'm like listening to the damn interview and I'm like, actually, sir, yes, she has. She actually has some stand up specials out already, you know, HBO. Y'all can YouTube it. She's been doing this shit. So I I did not like that he's on this national, on this, well, he's on this radio platform. Congratulations, sir. You just won an Emmy. But cat people forgot the fuck about you. I feel like it was a ploy to get people to remind people that he's, you know, Cat Williams. I'm funny too. Look at me. Why have I not, you know, received all these accolades? But because you're big headed. And because you have an ego. And as soon as you did get that fame, that shit went straight to your head. If y'all remember back, Cat Williams, when he, about the second year of fame, like after he really blew up. And y'all remember reading all this crazy shit start happening. So now you, you know, 
this struggling comedian, or I'm not even going to say struggling. You're just a comedian. And then you get in whatever movie or whatever you did that made you blow up. And now you got five bitches living at your house and you make enough money to pay a whole staff of people that you don't need. And you still have all these kids. And now you have all these fancy cars and you live this fancy lifestyle. It's like, what the fuck? So now you got money and now you're different. And I mean, were you not getting accolades and all of this stuff and I'm I'm just baffled. I'm baffled that it was a man who did it. Like a black man gets on the radio and then starts bashing and, you know, degrading this black woman for working hard and earning basically what the fuck she deserved. So now everybody, you know, on the internet, damn, he ain't have to do her like that, but that shit was funny as fuck. That's facts though. So y'all telling me that it's facts, that it's okay for a black man to get on the radio station and downplay a woman's success, a black woman's success. That's what y'all are saying. Because that's what the fuck he did. I don't care if you don't find her funny. All you had to say was, you know what? I'm actually very happy for her success. Um, Although I don't find her funny all the time, I'm happy that she is out here living. You know, her she's living her dream. You could have kept it at that. But then you wanted to go the fuck on and on about this and that. And she can't tell a joke. And what? At this point, I'm just like, sir, shut the fuck up. Because then I get angry about stuff like that. Anywho, we're about to move on. Because that, that really didn't make me mad. Um, We're moving on. So there's this school, you know, in Georgia. Well, so a new Georgia school policy will now allow teachers again, once again, to uh, paddle their students, a.k.a. beat the shit out of them with them long-ass rulers or yardsticks. Teachers should have been doing this. I mean, listen, that's what happened when I was in elementary school. And I think a little bit in high school. Definitely elementary school. Like my seventh grade teacher had three yardsticks taped together and would beat the shit out of you. She she really didn't care if you know, your mama gave her permission or not. Like she was going to beat the shit out of you if you didn't listen. Cause she was really like somebody's old grandma, but she was also a teacher. Shout out to Miss Evans. You know, I hope you still out here, girl. Um, but Miss Evans would beat the shit out of you with her three yard sticks taped together. If you talk back in her classroom or acted a fool and all the thugs now, cause I'm sure a lot of them are thugs. If you go find the thugs that were in seventh grade, you know, Miss Evans class with me, I'm positive them mugs were the best, you know, mannered children in the seventh grade that they could ever be. You know, that might have been the last time they were ever well mannered, but they weren't playing with her. So here's the thing. Parents now are way too sensitive. Like they're sensitive as fuck. It'd be like, you can't hit my baby because, you know, my baby, he can't be hit on his back. You know, on the right side of his back, you know, he got fibromyalgia, so you just can't be hitting him like that. And I fuck a teach up if she touch my baby. Your baby also is going to fuck you up, um, you, you know, just because. Like, they don't have a reason, but your baby actually going to fuck you up just because. Let the teacher, let the Miss Evanses beat the shit out of your kid so that your kid could develop some type of respect. You know, they might not succeed in school, but at least they'll be well mannered and they will have good behavior. You know, at least your kid will get an A in good behavior. You know, they might not get an A in shit else. But or let Miss Evans beat the shit out of your kid. Maybe your kid should be some sense into your, your son or your daughter. I, I'm all for this, y'all. I really am. I feel like teachers should be beating the shit out of kids at all schools, in all places, in all the states, in all the towns. Beat them kids' ass. Beat they ass. Ass they beat. Beat ass they. Because, I mean, who else is going to do it? Obviously, the parents ain't beating on the children anymore. And when I say beat, I mean beat. Um... Whoop, spank. White people give their kids spankings. I've never, <laughs> y'all, real life, if you think, <laughs> think about like when you when you got whoopings as a kid. Did you ever hear your mama say, or your daddy, I'm finna go spank his ass? No, I'm finna spank the shit out of him. I mean, when you were one or two, 
but you don't remember that shit. So it don't count. But as you got older, it wasn't, I'm going to spank the shit out of him. It was, I'm about to beat the shit off out of him. I'm going to beat the black off of this girl. I'm going to beat your ass. You better run. I feel like teachers need to say the same thing. You know, don't hold back. You're already teaching these, these children who can't retain information. I mean, Jesus Christ, I feel like this new generation, what are they? Y, Z, X, Generation X. That's not it. Z, whoever they are, Generation Alphabet. They can't retain any kind of information. And I, I'm worried for these kids. They don't remember shit. I'm like, sir, I just taught you this five minutes ago. I don't don't really remember. Stop smoking and doing drugs and maybe you will. Um, I feel like the teachers in Chicago already, no, they don't. They, they completely cut it out because there were some, some teachers left that would beat the shit out of the kids. The teachers in Chicago, I don't know. It's like younger teachers now. So now these teachers feel like they are friends. They're, they are letting the children think that they are friends. And it's like, that's not okay. Cause I will beat the shit out of you. And then I'm going to teach you the correct way to use, um, uh, fabricate in a sentence in the next minute. Okay. So I'm not your friend. Cause I like to beat and teach at the same time. Cause I, I want to beat it into you. So shout out to Georgia for this new school policy. Cause I'm here for it. Um, keep it up. Keep beating these damn kids, you know, one lesson at a time. Um, let's move on. Y'all, this next story, um, it really shows the truth within me and what kind of person I am. So here's what happened. This California man saved a woman from, uh, being attacked by a stranger with a a machete, right? So the lady, the man was at Starbucks, you know, trying to get his $5, uh, small coffee, no cream or sugar. That's how much fucking coffee cost at Starbucks. So he's there in line. The lady runs into the Starbucks yelling and screaming that, you know, somebody's trying to attack her. Soon after, here comes a man with a machete in his hand. And the lady's panicked. Everybody ran except for this young gentleman. Um, He stood there and he was telling his friend. He's in line with his friend. He's like, I can't let this lady die, so I got to save her. He jumps in front of her trying to fight off this attacker. He got stabbed a lot of times with the machete. Okay, so now he had to go to the hospital and it required over 200 stitches and he might permanently lose the ability to use his right hand. You know, he's a hero. He saved this lady's life. The lady is still living, but she's listed in critical condition. Um, Because I guess, you know, while she was running from this stranger with the machete, he was able to attack her. Here's the thing. I'm... um not doing that. I mean, lady, you know, one love, but you're going to have to die because I'm not fighting off anybody with a fucking machete. Like my arms are not cut proof. They are not machete proof. I do not have, you know, cut proof jackets or life vests or anything. Um, I'm not saving you. I can't save you from a bullet or a knife. So if I know I can't save you from the shit, I'm not going to try um, I mean, basically you're just gonna have to die or, you know, I will throw a hot coffee on you. If I'm at the Starbucks, I'm not going to throw my hot coffee on you. Cause I'm going to be pissed off that I just paid $5 for a small coffee and they forgot to put my fucking, uh, soy milk in there. And they gave me regular milk, which is going to make me, um, shit all over the place. I'm going to be angry. So I'm not going to throw that at you. I'll, you know, take Becky's coffee, you know? Because she's really not going to drink it and, you know, throw a hot coffee on somebody with a machete. But I'm not just going to jump in a fight and be like, girl, I got to save this woman because, you know, I'm a hero. No, you know, I'm going to be a hero in in another way. You know, I'll donate some food or some canned goods and, you know, old clothes or shoes to somebody. Like, I'm a hero in that way. But to jump in front of a machete, I I am um, incapable. Incapable. I'm incapable of doing that. <laughs> Did y'all know Keisha Cole had a song called Incapable? <laughs> this is so random. I, okay, random moment. <laughs> so, did y'all. 
<laughs> Did y'all see Keisha Cole? This is probably sometime the beginning of this year. She tried to um, promote this song called Incapable. Because y'all know how Keisha Cole's songs go. And she was on Wendy looking like somebody's uh, auntie. With the all red on and a red hat up there singing, incapable, incapable. And I'm like, Keisha Cole, you can't use the word incapable and turn it into a song. Because it doesn't work. The word is too long. Okay? Incapable, incapable. Oh, Jesus, help y'all sister Keisha out. She's struggling. Um, Anywho, back to the story. Um, Sir, who saved the lady from uh, Machete, you are a hero. Um, because obviously... Everybody else fucking ran because they had sense. And they were like, I didn't come to Starbucks to get cut. I just, I didn't, I didn't, I don't want to get cut by a knife or I don't want you to cut me in line. Um, so as a matter of fact, I'm just going to fucking run. You know, I, I don't even want the coffee. Um, I'll just get my money back tomorrow or credit it to my account. But I have to get the fuck out of here because, you know, I, I just don't choose to die today. Um, but shout out to you, young sir, for being a hero. And of course, he was a young black man. Um, let's move on. Y'all, this next category, or not category, but the next um, um, story. I'm excited about this, you guys. So the Creative Arts Emmys happened. And black people swept that shit up. Like it was just blackness winning all night um I'm positive um that that's partially due to the whole diversity issue in um Hollywood and at these award shows positive that's it so this is probably the white people saying here you know we're tired we're tired of you all you know screaming at us um I mean get ready white people this ain't the end but so we had uh, Tiffany Haddish won uh, an Emmy for her for guest hosting Saturday Night Live. And then we had Ron Cephas Jones, who plays Randall's father on This Is Us uh, won for Best Supporting Actor. Keenan Thompson finally won a fucking Emmy after 15 years of basically, I'm not going to use the word slave, but I did work on SNL. Like it took him 15 years to win a fucking Emmy. Uh, Emmy. When he should have been one one. Um, and then y'all yeah, Uncle Cat Williams won an Emmy also, Creative Arts Emmy for playing Alligator Man on um Atlanta. The y'all yeah, know Atlanta, the TV show. I don't really want to talk about cat, but you know, I he in the category. Whatever, what the fuck ever. Um I'm just excited for black people because we are sweeping shit up. And we're just, you know, going to the award shows and taking over all of the shits because we are dope as fuck and we give the best performances. Um, I'm excited about the real Emmys. Uh, I feel like Issa Rae definitely needs to win an Emmy by now. Um, not because they need to give it to her, but because Insecure is so fucking dope. It tells like the stories are so true. They are true to a T because this is so many of our lives and she, Issa Rae, like her acting ability is so normal. And what I mean by that is she, she, um, is such a great actor. Like it comes normal for her. So every emotion we know we can see it because her performance is so great that, you know, when you watch a TV show and you can try to eat, well, you can tell when an actor is trying too hard. Um, like shout out to random tandem podcast, but they ask do not like Lala acting <laughs> and, <laughs> and every time I watch power now, I laugh whenever she has a scene that comes on. Cause I'll just laugh at, um, random tandem. Cause they really, they were like her. She's terrible. Like her acting ability abilities are terrible. Now, I don't think they're terrible. They're very, very mediocre, but anywho. You can tell when an actor is or someone who calls himself an actor is trying way too hard to make the story believable. Issa's performance is so good that we get real life fucking mad at her and we start going on her social media threatening her. Like, why why are you this dumb? Why why don't you understand? And that's how good she is, and that's why she should win an Emmy. Um, so shout out to all the black people just winning shit. You know, we got the Emmys coming up. And, 
Um, I really don't know what's next. I mean, it's September. It's going to be um, some more awards coming up and it's always some shit. But shout out to all the black people that are at the Emmys. I hope all of the black people win. Um, Sterling K. Brown better win again. <sighs> Man, I'm in here crying. I'm like, I can't keep crying. I want Iyanla Van Zandt to win an Emmy. Because her performance on her show, that's a performance right there. And no one else, not one other person, not a person, one other can do what she does, which is perform. And I like Iyanla. She'd be fixing my life. My life get fixed. Id. Often. Um, you guys, that's it for black shit. Let's move on to what the fuck, Chicago. Uh, it's Mimi Wallace reporting live from the Black Emmys. Here are your weekly updates for what the fuck, Chicago. A U.S. meatpacking company has agreed to pay $1.8 million in lawsuit to 138 Somali Muslim Americans after refusing to allow them prayer breaks. Sharon Cooper, an employee of the company, said, well, they don't know my God. So do I get some money, too? A plan to implement and place federal monitors into the office of Dorothy Brown have been approved. Dorothy learned of this information and immediately called upon her sorors. Magic ensued as she chanted, Deltas, unite! And all of her files suddenly disappeared. A 27-year-old man was shot in the thigh after being hit by a stray bullet while exiting the gas station. The man held his friend as a hero as he drove him to the hospital and saved his life. When asked how did he get there so fast, the friend responded by saying, I ain't stopping no lights or nothing. There should be a lot of heroes because that's just regular Chicago driving. We don't stop at lights. Those are your weekly updates for what the fuck, Chicago. You guys, <laughs> let's get into the question of the week. Pretty excited about this week's question. Thanks to everybody who responded. I also just want to know the answer because I'm different. So here's the question. The question, uh, this week's question is for ladies. And so the question is, uh, what do you spend the most time on when getting ready to go out? Now, I wanted to know the answer because if I tell my friends I'm about to go out, it takes me 45 minutes, you know, max. Um, I'm lying. An hour max. It really does. If I say I'm about to go out, because I'm not really like a dressy person, I'm not going to be standing in a closet, you know, taking five hours to figure out what I'm going to get, what I'm going to wear and all of that stuff. That's not me. Um, I'm not putting all the effort into going to a club. First off, I don't go to clubs, but if we're going out, I'm not putting all the effort into getting dressed. Um, cause I don't give a fuck who sees me. Like I'm just cute. So it doesn't take much effort, but I really wanted to know. Cause some of some, you, oh, listen, my friends, y'all get on my nerves. You know, this is what I be trying to figure out. Like, we make plans. I'm getting off of work. Friend called me and like, girl, we should go out. We need to go get some wine. And I'm like, okay, I'm getting the fuck off work. She's talking about, I'm going to meet you there. How the fuck I leave work and still get there before you? I call you. Where you at? Oh, girl, I'm just about to leave the house right now. How? How? Um. So let's let's read some of these responses because I felt myself getting angry all over again. Let's see. Um, <laughs> shout out to Cloth Talk Podcast, who said, as a man, I'm waiting for the answers because I want to know, too. Like, what the fuck is taking y'all so long? I'm going to tell you. Uh, Whitney Danielle Coaching said, procrastinating on getting ready. When I tell you, that is the biggest thing for us. <sighs> Let me read the rest of these. Um, Seabreeze90 said, picking out an outfit because I don't have any going out clothes. I literally stand in my closet like, hmm, for about 20 minutes. Uh, Blue Tarot said, to think of an excuse to not go out that I haven't used already. Uh, laugh out loud, then guilt, then procrastination, <laughs> then finally getting ready and taking too much time when I'm already late by doing makeup because I don't want to look dead while I'm out. <laughs> okay, girl. <laughs> um, okay. 
Um, we got let the beat be great. Said my hair. Got to make sure my bang is perfect. Um, we got Suzanne. Uh, Red Mundart. I think that's how you say that. Said I try on many outfits before I decide on just the right one. Um, y'all be. <sighs> I just, I don't be understanding. Do we got any more? Um, I think that might have been it. Because I'm not switching over to this Facebook thing and answering. I don't have time for that. Anywho, um, thanks to everybody who responded. Um, that That's the truth. It takes women so long to go out or to get ready to go out because we procrastinate. Now, oh, and shout out to my friend T. Jones, who also said, you know, it takes her, her longest um the thing is makeup or hair or um her purse. I know T. Oh, I has to take about three hours. And I'm just like, girl, all we doing is going to the bar. That's it. Take that three hours. Um, but that's the thing. A lot of us ladies procrastinate. If we're going out with our boyfriends or husbands and, and the husband's call or boyfriends and they're like be ready. We're going out tonight. Be ready at this time. I'm coming to pick you up because, you know, I'm just going to leave work and I'll just come and pick you up. You get home before me. Husband, get home. Boyfriend, get home. Outside blowing, blowing the horn. Call you like, where you at? Oh, I'm about to come out now. That's a lie. What they really mean is, fuck. Um, I honestly forgot that you told me this or I need some more time or um, I honestly just got out of the shower because what I was really doing is sitting here binge watching this new TV show on Netflix. We procrastinate for no fucking reason. Or we'll be like, yeah, I'm gonna be ready by eight o'clock. And when you say that, it's just like, I just started on my makeup. Now here's the thing about women in makeup. There are some women who put on minimal makeup and it's like, all I need is some eyeshadow liner, um, do my eyebrows, gloss good. I'm good. That takes like 15, 20 minutes, right? Other women are like, no, I got to beat my entire face. Bitch, that's going to take two and a half hours. Your face is ugly. So it. some women literally spend the most time on makeup because if, if you know that woman who just refuses to go outside with a bare natural face and it's like, I have to put on all of the makeup, that's the shit that takes the longest. I think what comes in second place is clothes. We will literally stand in our closet trying to figure out what to wear or put out seven to 10 different outfits and then look at each outfit like this is ugly. This it makes no sense. This doesn't go together when five of the outfits are actually really cute. But in our minds, we're like, I'm trying to be cute. I don't think if I put that on, I'm on, I'm going to be cute. This doesn't match. I mean, in actuality, we really don't want to go the fuck out. You know, we'll tell you we need to go out more, but oftentimes, man, y'all pick the wrong days to go out. And I know y'all are like, well, what are the fucking right days? There is no real right day. It just depends on what mood we're in. And if it happens to be the day where we're not in a mood to go out, then you'll learn that um, by having to wait on us through procrastination. We will procrastinate like fuck. We will make you wait an hour and a half um, trying to throw subtle hints at you like, I really don't want to go out. But I mean, since you're putting forth the effort, I'm trying to be fair. What the fuck ever. Um, so again, thanks to everybody who answered the question of the week. And let's get into the topic of the week, which again is in reference to the question of the week. I think I'm going to continue doing this. I like the question and the topic of the week to go hand in hand. So this week's topic of the week is a woman's maintenance. I'm just trying to educate the dudes out there, right? So first up, first point is maintenance needs. Now, when a woman is getting ready to go out, whether it be to a birthday party, a celebration, someone's, you know, success, whatever, whatever the reason or occasion is for going out, It's literally a process. Now, other women or men would think that, you know, she don't really got to do all of this for me. Sir, we're not doing this for you. 
none of this is for you because you look very plain right now. I actually don't want to be associated with you right now because you didn't even put any effort into getting dressed and getting ready. So I'm just going to go to this party and pretend like I don't know you. The thing is, it's for us and it's for other women and our maintenance needs. So here's a a list. Before we go out, these are the things we have to do. (sighs) We have to choose an outfit that we like. We don't give a fuck if you like it or if our best friend likes it or whatever. If, If we don't like it personally ourselves, then that's another 45 minutes that you have to endure. Um, then we have to figure out what to do with our hair. And if you are natural, oh my God, it's going to take an additional hour because it'd be like, oh, what the fuck? I was in a shower for five minutes and now my hair sweated out. I, I don't have time for this shit. And so now you have to stand in a mirror and try to flat iron your hair. Or if you don't do flat irons and you just natural, you got to figure out how to pin it up or put it in a cute style that's acceptable to you. Okay. And let's go back to the shower part. Now I got to shave my legs and my body. And now, okay, I'm in the middle of shaving. And now I got to take a break because I'm hot as fuck and I'm having a heat stroke. Okay. I still have two whole legs to shave. Okay. Because all I really got was my thighs. Okay. I haven't even gotten to my underarms. All right. We're not going to talk about that. I have both of my legs and my fucking underarms to shave. And I really need to shave up my mustache because I see it growing in and I'm sick of this. I'm sick of it. I just shaved my mustache. Okay. So now we got to do all this cutting of the body hair and shit. And that takes time because we start shaving and we get hot as fuck and you can't just have the fan in the bathroom. I mean, you can, but you can't have the shower curtain wide open uh, because water would fucking get everywhere. So that's, that's another thing. Now you got the clothes and now you're trying to shave and now you're trying to do your hair. Um, and now you got to figure out which shoes to wear. Now shoes go into the clothes, but all you did was really pick out your outfit. Now (sighs) your shoe game is not proper. So the shoes that you thought would go with the outfit, once you put them on, it's like, this shit is ugly. So now I really got to be up here with these shoes and it's going to take additional time for accessories. All right. Now you're all dressed and you're ready to go out and it's like, boom, a hot flash just hit you. And it's like, what the fuck? What the fuck? If you're going out with your friends, it's like, whatever. You go out, you get in your car, you're ready to go. You got to stop and get gas because you got 15 miles left before you run the fuck out of gas. And it's like this damn place we going to is 63 miles east of the fucking Atlanta Expressway. I have to get some gas. These are the maintenance things. It's a lot of shit we got to do. Man, all y'all do is hop in the shower. You really don't wash everything because your balls still stink. I don't understand how the fuck y'all take showers and you get out of the shower and your balls still stink. Like, what do you do? You, you can't be still just rubbing soap on your body thinking that that's going to suffice use a fucking body scrubber use a towel sir use a towel your hand is not a towel stop just rubbing a bar of soap on your body other people may live with you and they got to use that that bar of soap and it just went in the you know i'm not gonna say in the crack of your ass because i don't think some of y'all wash in the crack of your ass but it's a different story but sir y'all just jump in the shower you you really don't put lotion on your body so now y'all ass is out here half washed and ashy you get out of the shower, you still have wet because y'all hoes don't even know how to dry off the right way. My God, y'all are simple. And then you throw on some damn clothes and put on a boatload of fucking deodorant and throw some axe and spray some axe all over your body. And that's it. And then y'all be sitting on the couch brushing your damn waves that are really not waves. They're just like, you know, sand in your fucking hair. Y'all just sit there brushing for 45 minutes. I don't understand. And then y'all ready. And it's like, my God, you didn't have to shave. You don't have to do shit to your hair. You don't have to, excuse me, really pick out an outfit. You just sitting here. You got on a white shirt and some fucking blue jeans and and some Jordans. No, but you want me to be cute and all of this shit. So that takes effort. That's a woman's maintenance. That's what we have to go through, sir. That's what takes the fucking longest. All of it. Um... And then just and just talking about like a woman's maintenance and getting ready to go out. So you have these plans to go out 
But then by the time you really get in your car, I swear to God, it's so many of us will just be like, man, fuck this shit. I have done that several times where I've literally gotten dressed, gotten into my car, call my friends and be like, Okay, I'm about to leave out. I see y'all there in 20 minutes. And these hoes are just like, oh, I just got back to the house. I'm going to get ready now. No, because I'm not going to be the first one that keeps showing up on fucking time. We agreed to meet this time. I'm not coming. So the plans to go out, they get shot often. Because here's the thing. I'm really strict about time. If someone tells me, hey, we're meeting here at 9 o'clock or at 10 o'clock, I'm going to show up that exact time. And then I'm going to call my friends before and be like, hey, where are you at? Because I expect you to be there already or down the street. I don't expect you to be saying, I just got back in the house. What the fuck were you doing? Hmm? What were you doing for two hours? I talked to you two hours ago. You say you were on your way home. Please let me know. You live 10 minutes from where you were. Why did it take you two hours to get there? Um, the plans to go out, they usually always get shot. Or if they, you know, fall through and you do go out. Um, you go out, you're with your friends. And by the time you've done all of this shit prepped and primped and cut and shaved and flat ironed and makeup, shoes, clothes, you get out and you're just like, Ugh, I'm over this fucking place already. This will be, we did all this to come here. It's six people in here and these drinks are watered down. And this bitch is trying to charge me $12 for a Long Island. Like bitch is six different liquors. It should only be six different dollars. That's it. Um, or we'll just go out and <laughs> you've done all of these things and now nobody wants to dance. Cause it's like, I'm not going to sweat out my fucking hair or these shoes hurt. I can't dance, but you'll have, you'll see women dancing often in their chairs. Cause it's like, which I'm tired. I've been standing up for like three hours straight trying to get ready. And now I'm about to be sitting down for at least two and a half of those hours that I spent standing up. Cause I need to rest right now. So if we're dancing in our chairs, it's like, I really do want to get up and dance, but I'm legit tired, like from standing up the whole time. Um, <laughs> and then like kind of going back, like the next point, going back to the, the maintenance, the getting it together part. That's the thing. Let me tell you what it is for me. It only, like I said, it only takes me about an hour to get ready for anything, but getting it together it's the hardest fucking part because I don't know about y'all ladies, but when I'm trying to get out the shower, get in the shower, get out the shower and run around and do other stuff, I, I, Jesus, I'm hot and I'm going through a hot flash and now I'm sweating from the inside of my body out. So I'm sweating. I just got out the fucking shower, but I'm sweating. So the first thing I'm trying to do is find a fan and I'm standing in front of that bitch for like 15 minutes. So that's, that's part of the process right there. It's like, I'm hot now. It's hot as fuck. It can be 50.7 degrees outside. After I've gotten out of this fucking shower, I'm hot. And now I'm sweating. And so now I need to find a fan. And when you lay on your bed in front of that fan, you really took a little 15 minute nap. That's what you don't know. So, man, we're, we're actually asleep. We took a little nap in between. So that's, that's really what happened. Um, but the getting it together part is, is it's crucial. It's like, what the fuck do I'm doing? I think the getting it together part, we're really contemplating whether or not we really want to go out. And 92% of the time, we don't want to go out. That other 8%, it's like, oh, shit, I did promise her that I would go out because the last time I skipped out on them. Or she came to my birthday party. Or she came to my baby shower. Or I did tell that bitch that I was going to do this. Oh, fuck. I did tell him that I was going to go to this new restaurant with him. Oh, fuck the hell. I don't feel like I don't want to. I just want to lay on my bed and watch Netflix. Like, we're all lazy now. That's all we want to do is lay in the bed and just binge watch shows on Netflix. Um, That's the getting it together part. It, you know, it's, it's especially difficult if you've literally just come from work and then you're supposed to go home and try to tr change real quick and get it together so you can go out with your friends. That shit right there. I don't even know how we do it. I don't. I honestly don't. Because men, they don't go home and change. They leave work and go straight to the fucking bar. And women will just be like, no, I've been at work all day. I've been walking around. I stink. I need to get in the shower. I have to change my clothes. Y'all stinking ass men just be like, 
sniff under your armpits one time and be like, nah, I'm good. I'm just spray some Axe over it. So I'm good. And that's why you niggas, that's why I can smell your balls through your clothes. And I'm just standing at your neck, but I can smell your balls. It's, it stinks that bad. You smell terrible. Um, and then I think just talking about getting it together. The last point is just the realization of it all. So you've gotten it all together. You've gone out to the club and now you're on your way back home. The realization is that I did all that shit for nothing. Cause I actually didn't really enjoy that. I didn't have fun. I spent all that damn money on them drinks when I literally could have made the same drink at home and it would have been better. And now you're pissed off. You're actually pissed off that you just took two and a half hours to get ready. You spent $50 on drinks um, and an appetizer that was not good when you had the same drinks at home, when you literally could have had a better time inviting your friends over to the house, y'all drinking, talking shit, and getting drunk. You would have had a better time. And so now that's all. That's what we do often. If you know any girls out here today or young women who have kind of, you, you feel like they've slowed down on going out. It's not that, you know, they don't. Yeah, that's the truth. Nobody likes going the fuck out. Don't nobody wants to be taking three and four hours getting ready, especially if you're getting older. Like right now, we appreciate inviting our friends over to the house, drinking, talking shit, playing games, ordering a 75 pan, you know, chicken wings with some fries and we'll, we'll make it work. Like I don't have to go out. I don't, cause I don't feel like it. I don't feel like doing all of that shit. What I'm about to do is put on these leggings, walk around the house. Y'all come over here and we are going to sit over here and talk shit. That is our version of going out now. But the thing is what, you know, overall point, what takes us so long when we're getting ready is the maintenance. And it's like, I'm not getting, you know, all prim and preppy for you. I'm doing this for myself because I'm not going to go outside and my legs hairy. You know, I'm going to be angry when I sit down and I keep rubbing my fucking legs together on accident. And I'm like, why you keep touching me? I'm thinking it's a man, but it's actually my other leg because it's hairy as fuck. Nobody wants to do that. I don't want to go out and I raise my arms up because I'm dancing and then, you know, all that hair there. So I got to shave. You know, I want to do my hair. I want to look, you know, a little bit cute when I go out. So this shit takes maintenance, okay? That's the thing. That's what the where the procrastination comes in because we realize, oh my God, I really have to do all of this shit. And I don't feel like it. So that's why it'll take me like an hour. Cause I'm just like, I'm not doing that. I'm not wearing that. I'm not gonna be comfortable. Um, I'm about to put these shoes on and these jeans and that shirt and uh, put my hair in a ponytail and I'm going to go out and support your ass and then I'm coming back home because I really don't want to be out here anyway. I don't know these hoes. These hoes don't know me. These hoes ain't loyal. The end. Um, You guys, that's it. That's it for the topic of the week. But that's a woman's maintenance. Like we have a lot of stuff to do, guys. We have so much stuff to do when we're trying to get ready and go out. And y'all ask, you know, hop in the shower for two and a half minutes, <sighs> rub your balls one time, which is not enough. Throw on some clothes when you still have wet and then spray a shitload of Axe on your body. And y'all are finished. That's why y'all are ready in 20 minutes, 15. You ain't put on no lotion. Your feet are ashy as fuck. Your face is ashy because you didn't put anything on your face. I don't even know if you washed your face while you were in the shower. That's another conversation. But um, you guys, that's the topic of the week. You know, a woman's maintenance. So stop. You can't rush us because it's a fucking process. Unless you want me to go out looking like Eddie Monster. Uh, it's going to be a process. Um, You guys, let's move on to Ratchet Drink Chronicles. What's in your motherfucking cup? <laughs> Pull up. Ooh, that's new. I like it. That's new. I like it. Um, you guys, right now, what I'm drinking on is um, triple sec and uh, I like. I'm drinking on peach snaps and orange juice together. That's it. It tastes real good. It tastes like, you know, regular orange juice. You know, just a little bit sweeter. That's it. You know, I'm a lady. So I really wanted a mimosa, but I didn't have any, you know, champagne or that's a lie. I have some Prosecco in there. Um, 
I didn't want to open it because it's part of my wine collection. So I was like, let me mix something else with this orange juice. Orange juice and um, peach schnapps. It's actually pretty good. It tastes like a little, you know, fruit juice drink. That's it. Mm-hmm. 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 Yep. Yep. And y'all know that a lady never sips. She squigs. If you can't squig, you ain't no real lady. And that's all I got to say to you. Um, so that's it, y'all. Go get yourself some peach snaps and mix that shit with some orange juice and it acts it tastes pretty good. Um and you can put it in a water bottle and take it to work. We all need to, I think we all need to just have a little squig at work. Just don't make it a habit. That's not what I told you to do. Um, let's move on to some shout outs of the mother eight bars. Um first shout out goes to Zeke Russell and Calvin. Um, thanks to those young men, um, I got to be a part of this dope short film called Love Lessons. Wrapped up my scenes uh, this weekend or this past weekend, this past Saturday. And I had a really good time. So uh, shout out to the cast members also um, to, uh, let's see, Hannah, Mia, just uh, Yesenia. Those are our character names. But we had a dope time filming. Um, oh, man, we were at this dope boutique. I think it's called Shop By You or Shop For You. And it's in the Bridgeport area. You guys, if you can look that up, the clothes there was so dope. So I'm definitely going to go back and support um but shout out to those guys Zeke and Calvin for you know granting me the opportunity to be part of the film Love Lessons um definitely had a good time and shout out to Sean because we had we shot in a condo and you know Sean was being nice and generous it was his space and he was like would y'all like some water and I was like no I would like a beer and he provided me with a beer so shout out to you sir because you didn't have to do it but you did (laughs) won't he do it (laughs) actually I did (laughs) Shit. Um, shout out to REA Radio. Uh, shout out to Treese and Eric for um, letting me co-host, you guys. I got to co-host a radio show um, that's here in Chicago, 88.9. Um, I will probably put up on the Vibes uh, Instagram page or social media page how you all can listen to that. But shout out to REA Radio again for having me. We had a really dope time. Um, had some really deep conversations, some things that we, we talked about just um, were things that especially black people needed to talk about that we often kind of put under a uh, sweep under the rug. So the conversations were uh, very much needed. And um, I just had a dope time on the radio show. So shout out to y'all. Um, I definitely want to come back. Let me know. And then last shout out goes to my therapist. Y'all, I told y'all I'm in therapy. My therapist this past Friday, I go to therapy every Friday. I just had a really good session. Like it felt really good to just talk it out. I didn't even really have anything bothering me. I was just happy. I just had a really good week and a happy week. And I just wanted to tell my therapist about it. And it feels really good to, um, kind of share your good news with somebody who's going to be excited for you just as excited as you are about your own accomplishments they show the same level of excitement so shout out to my therapist girl you're the real mvp thank you um and that kind of let's move on to the next segment which is therapy free speaking of therapists this week's lesson or piece of advice that I want y'all to take away and therapy free is simply, um, and this is something that my therapist told me. So every day, involve yourself in something that makes you genuinely happy. Don't be out here like, oh, I'm going to get hacked. That should make me happy. Oh, I'm going to have sex because that makes me happy. No, that's not genuine happiness. Um, find happiness in something every day. Whether that's, ooh, you know, I I got to watch my favorite TV show or listen to your favorite song or go and take a walk down, you know, your favorite block or your favorite area, whatever. Look back at some old pictures, something that makes you genuinely happy. Talk to that friend who makes you smile all the time, Um, whatever it is. Excuse me, y'all. Find something every day. Find something 
Involve yourself in something that is going to make you genuinely happy. Because if we are always like down and and worried about things and problems and how we're going to figure them out and we neglect happiness, then we're going to lose sight of what happiness is. We're going to lose like what that means, what it feels like, what it looks like. So I've been practicing it. My therapist also told me every night before I go to bed, you know, just say three to five things that you're thankful for. Now, I've kind of been doing that the opposite way because I usually forget because by the time I lay down, it's a wrap. So I wake up in the morning and I'll just say out loud three to five things that I'm thankful for and um, say like your daily motto or your daily mantra. And that would be me finding happiness in something throughout the day. Um, And it's definitely been working, definitely been working. It's just been over the weekend thus far. And it feels really great to just wake up, say what you're thankful for, and then go out and find happiness um, in some part of your day. So that's it for therapy for you guys. Make sure you're just um, finding happiness. It's very important. It's very important and detrimental to your mental health. Think happy thoughts. Um, You guys, that's the end of the show. Make sure you go and follow Vibes Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, Instagram is Ask Vibes, A S K V I B E Z. Facebook and um, Twitter is just Vibes Podcast. That's Vibes with a Z. Um, f- subscribe to Vibes Podcast on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple Music, SoundCloud. However, you listen to the podcast, tell your friend, tell their friend to tell their grandma and your grandma's uh, lover to listen to the motherfucking podcast. I just wanted to let you all know now that your grandma has a lover. That's why she's been acting different. Um, She's been getting dirt down. Shout out to the grandmas. Um, You guys, make sure you subscribe to the podcast. Um, you guys, you can email me questions if you feel like it or whatever you want to email me. Uh, no dick pics or sexual pictures, please. I'm not into it. Um, you have some questions you want to ask or some things you just want to share. Shoot me an email to askvibez at gmail.com. That's askvibes at gmail.com. And um, let me know what's going on. Also, if you got any friends or if you know you're a listener and you want to have your music featured on Vibes Podcast, you guys, I'm always looking for music. So I just, you know, want to give everybody a chance to, you know, be the artist of the week and have your song featured as song of the week. Send me an email as well. Um, make sure your music is good because if, if your music is not good, I literally just won't respond to you. And if I don't respond to you, that means that your, your shit is trash. Um... Because I just don't want to send you an email back and be like, you're trash. I think that's me. You guys, that's the end of the show. Hold on, we come. I'm going to have to bring Master P back. Can't sell dope where you sleep at. Can't fuck hoes where you creep at. I... If you're creeping, is that not the same place you would be fucking the hole? Is that not how that goes? Am I confused? Can't fuck holes where you creep. Can't sell dope where you sleep. But where else do you sell dope then? Isn't that why people call it the trap house? Okay. Um, And I'm out this B.I.H.